Welcome to the beginning of my five-part mini-series showcasing some of the best adventures that Norfolk has to offer. Set in England's East Anglia, it's home to plenty of wildlife, a breathtaking coastline, the Norfolk Broads National Park, and some pretty tasty food to boot. I'll kickstart the series sharing our Airbnb tiny home cottage. Hi and welcome to a tour of our tiny home Airbnb property here in Norfolk. Come on in. So as per my coin term of tiny home, this is pretty much the main living area, but despite it being a tiny home, it does have a really well equipped kitchen. So at the moment, the UK government are allowing for us to be able to go away on holiday or for long weekends, such as what we've done this weekend. But one of the stipulations is that it needs to be self-catered accommodation. So somewhere with a kitchen so that we're not reliant on needing to eat out. And one of the things that really drew me to this Airbnb listing was the fact that despite it being a tiny home for just two people, it's got a really, really well equipped kitchen. So here we've got a load of drawers that have got plenty of pots and pans. There's trays to be able to do roasting of vegetables, There's like a pizza tray in there if you wanted to have quick and easy takeaway pizza, say from like a supermarket from the freezer section. There's a full oven that's got a combination grill in there. There's a four ring hob on the top and then plates, cups, sauces. There's like egg cups if you want like hard boiled eggs for breakfast and what have you. Like some of the kitchen gadgets like even I don't have at home so I was eyeing this up earlier on for like a cheese grater so you put the lid on and you grate the cheese on one of these and the cheese goes inside of the little container. I'm thinking, oh, I need to go and find out where I can buy one of these from because I really want one now in my own home. And the other thing that I was eyeing up, and I had seen these when I was in Morocco a few years ago. And they've even got a tagine pot up at the top there. So if you wanted to go all out and actually start cooking some really good things, then this kitchen is really, really well equipped. One thing that I love about this kitchen is that it has a dishwasher. So it means that when you're on holiday and you're not wanting to have to hand wash everything for yourself, you can bung stuff into a dishwasher. Our Airbnb host has very kindly put together a basket, which in fairness, we've put a lot of our own stuff in, but it's got things like teas, coffees, hot chocolates, sugars, as well as in the fridge. So it's like an in integrated fridge that's like hidden away. It looks like a cupboard so it looks nice and sleek but it is actually a fridge. She very kindly also left us some milk as well so it was just a really nice touch for when we arrived and we weren't grappling for some caffeine because the drive out of London on that bank holiday Friday night was so much longer than what we were expecting. I think everyone else in London perhaps had the same idea of us as just a getaway for the weekend. I really love as well how sleek and quite beautiful things like the toaster and the kettle are. Having stayed in a lot of Airbnb properties, sometimes you can go to ones where everything just feels very cheap. I feel like here they've not scrimped and scraped and they've actually gone for things that look really quite nice. And then moving away from the kitchen area, there's a nice table. It probably could seat four, but obviously it's pushed up against the wall with just the two chairs because it is only designed to sleep two people. So it's really nice to complement the kitchen in that you can sit down and have a proper meal or sit up at a table and, and eat breakfast. There's this beautiful Chesterfield leather couch. I really, really love the touches of like the pheasants because as we've been driving around Norfolk, we've seen loads of pheasants just wandering around in farmers' fields and some out on like the edges of the roads. None thankfully have run in front of the car so far. Lovely rug to help keep things nice and warm. That was actually one thing that I loved. When we turned up, it was later on in the evening, we were quite exhausted from quite a long journey and they made sure that the heating was turned on because it feels like it's very unseasonably cold at the moment. So if there's one thing that is not problematic with this Airbnb property is that it is really, really well heated. But this is something that I absolutely love. So this cottage, is on an old estate. So the grand old estate house doesn't exist anymore. I believe, I might have this wrong, but I believe it was bombed during a previous war. This house was a house that the workers would come and use, specifically to be able to bake things like bread so that they could eat them during their lunch times. And this was the bread oven that the workers who worked on the estate would come and use. And I just love the fact that they haven't just ripped it out. And it's got the beautiful 
artwork on the front of the doors and the really old tiles and the beautiful wood as well. So it's a really, really nice feature. Obviously for when we get back in the evenings and we just want to chill and relax, we've got a TV. I, again, love the fact that they've got the sound bar in here so they haven't just said, right, well you can listen to the terrible sound quality from the back of the TV. It's just all of those extra little bits and pieces. And then again, I'm pretty sure this must be the original window just because of the, the glass and the wood. And it just looks out over some beautiful fields and trees. So it's just a lovely rural view. The next thing is this spiral staircase. So I will take you on up and I'll show you guys what's upstairs. Then when you get to the top of the stairs you come up into this which is the one and only bedroom of the tiny home and despite it being a tiny home I think because of the vaulted ceiling they've not just flattened it off it goes up and you've got again just those beautiful exposed wooden beams it helps to just make it feel a lot more airy and open than perhaps what the true square footage is got a nice double bed with a bedside table I love the lamp that's in the corner because it looks like a super old lamp, but when we first turned up and I was trying to turn it on and I couldn't find a switch and I realized that they've obviously upcycled it, but it's got the modern technology of just tapping it to get it to come on. And I love that because you're not having to grapple around for it. They've even gone so far as to provide us with a wardrobe, which has been very helpful because as I said, I came straight after work on Friday. So I've been able to hang up a work shirt. The, the original wooden floorboards are still in here. They've obviously been sanded and then varnished and they actually feel really warm underfoot. And I think what I love about these wooden floorboards is even though they have been sanded and varnished over, you've still got a lot of those stains and like chippings out of them that you just can't get rid of. But when you take a really old period property such as this one, instead of it looking like it's something that's been damaged, I tend to look at it and see a story and see history and I think about what might have actually happened on the floor of this house that has caused it and at what point in history and who were those people and what they were they doing. That's one of the charms about these old sorts of properties that I really like when you have these discrepancies unlike engineered hardwood that you just bought down B&Q recently and as soon as that gets a mark on it you just don't see it in quite the same way whereas this it just gives it charm. Bedroom's also got a dressing table with a mirror, and this is something that I don't even have at home, so it definitely feels like a luxury. It's been really nice to be able to sit on the stool and brush my hair, and I would say put on my makeup, but let's be honest, I don't wear makeup. So it's definitely making me feel like I want to have one of these at home. The views out of the windows as well. You've got three windows. This one overlooks a really pretty courtyard private garden, which I'll take you guys out to shortly. And up at the back is a nice little pond and then out over the brick wall, I think might be some like allotments or maybe another, another house's garden. Uh, this one is similar view to what we've got downstairs. And then the window off to this side, you really feel like you're right up in the trees because there's quite a nice leafy green tree. It's so close to the property. It's kind of what you look out into, which I think if that was the only window, it would be a bit problematic for daylight. But with the other ones, just the variety is absolutely stunning. Through the door through here is an ensuite bathroom. So considering that this is a tiny home, this bathroom was actually quite a surprise to us because it's really rather spacious. I would have expected that you would have taken the width of a shower and then you would have just made the bathroom the same width, but it is actually quite a bit wider, which has allowed for us to have a full size sink in here. I love the fact that they've got the heated towel rail. And then I think what really sets this place apart from lots of other Airbnb properties that I've stayed in, aside from the kitchen, was definitely when I saw this bathroom. Because in here they've got all kinds of stuff for us. So if we'd forgotten toothbrushes, they've got a two pack of toothbrushes, they've got toothpaste, they've got shower gels, soap, and they've even got things like a box of tissues and cotton buds and you name it. There's just so much stuff there that often Airbnb hosts just don't go that extra mile to provide those sorts of things. And it just really feels like they've thought about all of the nice little extra touches just in case we'd forgotten any of them. 
So I think now that I've shown you guys pretty much the whole of the inside of the place, I'll take you outside to the back just to show you the garden and some of the views through the garden wall. So, don't get me wrong, it's certainly not a large garden and definitely class it as being a small courtyard garden, but I definitely feel like given the the fact that it is this tiny house, the tiny garden goes really well with it. You've got a couple of seats and a table to be able to come out and have drinks, maybe on a slightly warmer summer's evening than what we've got here at the moment. I really love the fact that you've got this old brick wall and they've gone to a real effort to put out things like roses and pansies, or I think there might actually be violas. I'm not always the best when it comes to garden plants and flowers. And then what's really nice is that over here, and they've got this cut out in the garden wall. I wish I knew why it was here because, again, just looking at the design of it and the way in which the bricks are a little bit different, it says to me that it was structurally built this way. But then again, you've got these beautiful views over the green countryside, although I think you do have some kids from the local neighbourhood who are just playing out in the garden making a little bit of noise at the moment. But aside from that i mean you can hear all of the birds and it is just really really peaceful living in london getting to come away to a place like this it is quite a lovely escape the cottage is situated just west of norwich giving country road access in under an hour to the norfolk north coast home to the seals at the national trust's blakeney point and wells next to the sea, a pretty seaside town whose beach is lined with colourful huts and pine woods for a backdrop. Drive time to Wroxham, the capital of the Norfolk Broads, and a great starting point for a boat trip is just 20 minutes away, allowing for a wonderful day gawping at both the beautiful waterside houses and stunning boats, as well as plenty of wildlife spotting too. The National Trust's horsey wind pump Still within the National Park is a 40 minute driveway where an additional abandoned mill and a coastline full of hundreds of seals are close by. Over the long weekend, we'll be exploring all of this as well as trying some of the local delicacies. So if you've not done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my Norfolk adventures.